Ryzen Max is here. I'm going to go over that as well as tons of other releases that AMD has done. If you missed my first video where I went over their 9000 series GPUs, I'll have that up here somewhere. Either way, if you missed that one, definitely make sure to check that one out as well. That is with the 9000X 3D chips, the new ones, as well as their 9070 XT and 9070. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Okay, it's news time, and first up, before I get to Ryzen Max, we have a couple other releases. For one, we have their new 9000H series, so this is their high-performance series CPUs, notebook CPUs specifically, and as you can see, while they have a couple regular HX series, they also have HX3D, meaning yes, X3D chips are going to be on mobile. Here we have, first up, the 9955H X3D, man, the names are getting wild here. Either way, this is a 16 core, 32 thread CPU, up to 5.4 gigahertz boost, 144 megabytes cache, 54 watt TDP. Then we have the non X3D version. It's basically the same, except 80 megabytes of cache instead of 144. Finally is the 9850HX. This is a 12 core, 24 thread CPU with up to 5.2 gigahertz max boost. And once again, don't forget these are mobile chips, but these are likely the mobile chips that are gonna be in the really big gaming notebooks, things like that, stuff where you're likely gonna pair it with a really good discrete GPU. Either way, this one comes with 76 megabytes of cache and 54 watt TDP. And these are available within not the first quarter of 2025, like my last video, a lot of them were available then. This is the first half. Then AMD also announced a new series of Z processors. Don't forget that these like their Z1, things like that, which actually if you follow this channel, you should be aware of these because I have discussed that these are apparently going to be released. For anyone who doesn't know, these are basically the mobile gaming devices. Think the Steam Deck, something like that. Either way, this is the Z2 Extreme. This is an 8-core 16-thread one up to 5 gigahertz max boost. And while the regular Z2 actually has a faster 5.1 gigahertz boost, this bad boy comes with 16 CUs. Pretty good, pretty decent boost there. We're talking 15 to 35 watt C TDP then 24 megabytes of cache, then the Z2, same thing, eight cores, 16 threads, except only 12 graphics cores and a little bit lower TDP, obviously because of the loss in those CUs. Finally, we have the Z2 Go. This one is a four core, eight thread processor with up to 4.3 gigahertz max boost, 10 megabytes cache, and 15 to 30 watt C TDP, and once again, 12 CUs. And these are available Q1 of this year. Moving on, we have some new Ryzen AI 300 processors. These are the lower end processors you can see. So we have the Ryzen AI 7 350. This is a core 16 thread CPU up to five gigahertz max boost, 24 megabytes cache, 50 peak tops, then 15 to 54 watt C TDP. Then we have the Ryzen AI5, they're killing me with these names, 340, this is a six core 12 thread CPU, up to 4.8 gigahertz max boost, 22 megabytes cache, once again, 50 peak tops, same C TDP. These are available Q1 2025, then their pro versions of it will be available in Q2. Now, we actually have a little bit of performance with these. This is a few multi-threaded performance versus the Qualcomm X Plus. You can see that it beats it in Cinebench R24, Handbrake, and Blender Classroom. We're talking 35% average. Now it's just based on nine apps tested versus it. Still not too bad. Obviously we'd wanna know which notebook it was tested with things like that just because the thermal headroom is very dependent on what type of notebook chassis you have. Just keep that in mind when it comes to comparing notebooks. It gets really complicated for sure. Regardless, they're also claiming that it beats Intel's Core Ultra 7 258V. This is their notebook chip and this one it's talking on average 30% faster. So these are some very impressive numbers, I will say. Then we have just 
some claims here. This is the fastest Windows NPU. Obviously, it is with 50 tops. Um, you can basically see it compared to Intel's Core Ultra 7, as well as the Qualcomm X Plus. Not only that, but they are actually also claiming multi-day battery life, up to 24 plus hours of battery life with video playback. Obviously, I would like to see this versus other notebooks, but it definitely does sound pretty impressive. And here we have it, people. Just like what the league said, their new monster APUs are called Ryzen Max. Technically, Ryzen AI Max, but I'd rather just call them the Ryzen Max series. Regardless, these are absolute beasts when it comes to APUs. These are, we're talking APUs we've never seen before. And let's get right to them. So just like the league said, we're talking a Ryzen AI Max Plus and Ryzen AI Max. You can see, just like the league said once again, when it comes to the CPU, you get up to 16 Zen 5 performance cores and up to 40 RDNA 3.5 compute units. That is more GPU cores than the 7060 XT, and it's not a little bit more, it's a lot more. Then you get up to 50 tops. This thing is massive, up to 256 gigabytes per second bandwidth. This is the memory interface, and, and I'm actually gonna go over each one individually in just a second, but first let's go through some performance. You can actually see um, they're talking rendering here completely blows things out of the water when compared to the Core Ultra 9 288V, up to 2.6 times faster rendering. Then when it comes to graphics performance, obviously it's gonna completely blow that anything, any other APU out of the water. They're comparing this to the Core Ultra 9 288V. Ultimately, I'd much rather see comparisons versus discrete GPUs, but regardless and time spy it obviously obliterates it does really well there then you can also see leadership 3d rendering performance versus the macbook m4 pro we're talking massive performance here depending on what you're doing then cinebench 2024 it actually loses to the m4 pro 14c but it does really well in blender corona and then completely kills it in v-ray moving on according to this in LM Studio, you actually get up to 2.2 times faster AI performance versus the RTX 4090 and up to 87% lower TDP versus the 4090. I'm not really sure how many people are planning on doing things like this on notebooks, but it definitely is fairly impressive. Then we actually have all of the APUs right here. You can see we have, so we have the regular Max version, then you have the Pro version. So the Ryzen AI Max Plus 395, just like what the league said. If you follow this channel, you pretty much learned everything before the actual announcement, but you can see we're talking 16 cores, 32 threads, up to 5.1 gigahertz max boost, 80 megabytes cache, 50 peak tops, 40 CUs, and only a 45 to 120 watt C TDP. Definitely pretty impressive, although it really does suck because they didn't share any kind of performance numbers versus actual discrete GPUs. I definitely wanna see those and I wanna see them soon. Next, we have the Ryzen AI Max, 390 and of course there's also a pro version of each one of these except for this this one is 380 is only a pro version but the ryzen AI Max 390 this is a 12 core 24 thread cpu up to 5 gigahertz boost 76 megabytes cache 50 peak tops same ctdp except 32 cus still really impressive don't forget this is an apu then we have the 385. This is an A-core 16-thread CPU with up to 5.0 gigahertz max boost. Same, well, 40 megabytes cache, but then the same peak tops. All these actually have the same, as well as the same CTDP, but then 32 CUs still. Finally, this Pro version that is six cores and 12 threads and only 16 CUs. Next, we have a few that are apparently gonna be releasing these. This one, the ASUS ROG Flow Z13, it actually already leaked, and I'm gonna be meeting with ASUS, so hopefully I get a chance to look at this, talk to them about it and everything, but you can see, 
Each of these are coming with the Ryzen Max series. These two are actually the Pro series, while this is just the regular consumer Ryzen AI Max. Finally, they also released some new regular Ryzen and Ryzen Pro 200 series processors. These are, of course, not as powerful as their 300 series parts, but you can see trusted performance, battery life, AI for everyday experiences, and you can see that the highest end ones are eight cores and 16 threads, still not bad at all. Um, up to 5.2 gigahertz max boost, 24 megabytes cache, 35 to 54 watt CTDP, 16 peak MPU tops. So the tops aren't as powerful as the 300 series, but still not bad at all. If you just want something that can do a little bit of localized AI, things like that, pretty impressive. Then we have the 260 series, also a core 16 threads. So is the 250 series. These are these both of these are 5.1 gigahertz. This one though is 15 to 30 watts versus 35 to 54 watts. Then we have a few six core, and then finally a four core one. And these two bottom ones do not have um, an MPU in them, so you're not going to be able to do any kind of like localized AI like that. Either way, all of these are available. Q2 2025. Either way, all of these are going to be available Q2 2025. So while that does it for today, I really hope you like these videos on all of AMD's announcements. Obviously, it's been a ton, so that's why I kind of split them up into a couple videos. But let me know what your favorite announcement was down in the comments below. And if you like the video, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up. And as always, have a great day.